um, and live streaming. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask everyone to mute themselves except for our lovely teacher. Um, okay. Welcome to week 38 of Temple Gates of Prayers Homemade with TGP. Um, this week we have a wonderful guest teacher. She happens to be my brother-in-law's mom and Alan Wasterman's first cousin, which is now how you all know how we're related. Um, and she will be teaching us how to make kreplach. So welcome to Barbara's Kitchen. And here is Barbara Mann. Thanks, Dina. Well, it's my pleasure to be here with you guys to talk about kreplach. Because who doesn't like kreplach? Um, I am sure, I'm going to put on gallery view for a moment. Uh, how many of us grew up eating kreplach in our mom's or grandma's kitchens? A lot of us. So I did a little um, reading about kreplach to see what I could find out. So it's traditional food for the Hagim, the holidays in Ashkenazi Jewish families, not in Sephardic families. They have so many of their own wonderful recipes that those of us who come from Ashkenazi backgrounds do not have. Um, and it is apparently very traditional to eat kreplach on Erev Yom Kippur, on Simchat Torah, actually um, Erev Simchat Torah, which follows, um, no, um, you beat the, the yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Hoshana Rabba. Yeah, following Shmini Atzeret, right. And on Purim, exactly. So apparently though, history tells me, which I didn't know, that it's related to holidays when we ask for forgiveness for our sins. And in the case of Purim, we are actually not exactly asking for forgiveness of our sins, but we're cheering the demise and the, the dethroning of Haman. Um, and apparently it is because we chop and mince the meat and hide it in the dough as if to cover and erase our sins. I didn't know that, but that's what I read when I read up on this. I will tell you though, that in our family, we eat kreplach on, on Erev Rosh Hashanah and on Sukkot. So we don't exactly follow the same minhag as apparently a lot of the Ashkenazi Jewish world does. Um, I'm gonna start and then I'm gonna interrupt with a couple of other little things that I found out, okay, along the way. So here I have some leftover bits of beef. And this is from steak dinner that we had a little while ago that I saved the pieces. It has, it, there's a little fat on it, a little pieces that we didn't want to eat, but it's perfect for kreplach, okay? And I have, uh, wait a minute. I have a half of a medium onion, okay? Um, I will tell you that there's no exact science to this. It's not like baking a cake, that if you add too much of this or too little of that, the cake will fall or it won't taste good. This is not like that at all. This is not an exact science. So you really can play with it, depending on what you have. In addition, you can make this with leftover chicken. And as Ellen pointed out to me, they don't eat red meat. They, so she makes, she's gonna make it with chicken. And I have many times made it with a combination of beef and chicken. The one thing I don't suggest is that you make it with pre-ground beef or turkey chicken. It, it's not gonna taste the same inside. You can do something with the dough wrapper. You can make a kreplach with a ground beef cooked, um, cooked ground beef um, combination of ingredients, 
but it's not going to have the same texture and it's not going to taste the same as the, the traditional crepe So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my, um, Yona's going to try and film this. So if you can see, I'm going to put, can you see what she's showing you? Dina? No, they're not seeing it. No, it's not coming up at all. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. Now you can see, and I've got the food processor. And what I'm going to do is pulse it. You don't want this to be a paste, a puree. You want it to be chopped. So I'm gonna pulse it, watching what I'm doing. You're doing great now. Barbara, Barbara, I have like a piece of chicken like this. Do you see me? Yes. Should I, should I like pull it first and make it like strips first before Just I put it in? it up with a knife. One, two, three. I'm having Alan do all that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let me look at mine. It needs to go a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Good. You're good. So now I'm going to take this mixture, which I'm going to show you. See? It's not all pasty, it's, it's like crumbs, okay? And I'm gonna dump it in a bowl. Barbara, I'm sorry, did you do that with the, the onion or just the meat? I put it all in together. Okay, and hi, Charlie, okay. I put it all in together, Alan. There was about two cups of meat that is you know measured in, it was with air and whatnot. And then there was a half of a medium onion. Okay. And now I have this mixture. There you go. See? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add salt and pepper. And I'm not measuring, but I'm not adding a generous portion of salt. Where's my pepper? Someplace. <laughs> Here's my pepper. And I'm going to add pepper. Good. If you like a lot of pepper, you can add more pepper. You can add any other seasonings that you like. Could go a little bit of, you know, what would be good in here? A little shaved nutmeg would probably be delicious. Okay. Or if you want to add herbs like, like diced up um, basil or some thyme. No, I don't think, I don't know about mint, but. I said dill. Oh, dill. Yeah. If you like dill, you could do that too. So I have this. And I'm gonna add, I need an egg. Okay. Can you get me an egg, honey? Yes. I need an egg. I'm gonna add one egg and then my fill, filling will be done. So I also um, read Here you go, Mom. that the, the name of Krepla, first of all, who knows what one of these dough pouches is called? A Krepple. A Krepple, good job. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, and it comes from the German, which the, apparently the word lach in Yiddish means little and German um, word prep means like a pancake or, or something like the doughy texture that you're rolling out. Um, and that is, so now I'm gonna do my egg and I'm going to mix it into the filling and I'm going to, Set it aside for when we are ready. And you know, it doesn't look like very much, but that's going to make a whole lot of crepe because you don't put very much into the dough pack pockets. If you do, they fall apart in the water. Okay. And um, what you're done with this? Yeah, I'm done. Thank you. Barbara, do you put the egg in the in the food processor? Yes, you could, but I, no, I didn't. I, I broke the egg and mixed it up, and then I mixed it right in with the, okay. with the meat and onion mixture, and then I put, and you have to put salt and pepper, okay? Or any other seasonings you want, right? So let me get this out of here. I'm doing so great. while you're finishing that, Alan, I'll just tell you. So I ate, I remember as a little girl helping my grandmother, not Dora, but Grandma Rose, who was my mother's mother, make kreplach. And my grandmother was not a wonderful cook, 
She made a few things that were wonderful. Preplach was one of them. And she had um, a reputation, in fact, also. The story is that she used to make the lightest, fluffiest matzo, matzo balls, kanedlach, for the entire family on one egg. I, I don't know if I believe that, to tell you the truth. <laughs> Having made a lot of kanedlach with, in my life and used quite a lot of eggs. Um, but that was the story about Grandma Rose. Now, my mother once went over to my grandma and asked her to show her how to do it. And she did, but my mother couldn't write anything down because my grandmother didn't, didn't measure anything. And, and we never really passed it on. My mother never made kreplach, although my mother was a wonderful cook and a wonderful baker. She oh. did not make kreplach. I took it up probably 15 years ago? 20, 25 years ago. Uh, no, I didn't do it in the early days of my marriage either. Um, however, I decided I want to learn how to do it. And it took a little figuring out. My dough recipe, which I sent along and, and, and uh, Dina will share with you, is, is adapted from the old Lubavitch Women's Cookbook which I got when I first got married, which is a long time ago. Um, and I, I like that cookbook for a lot of traditional Jewish recipes and I have adapted it a little bit. So I'm gonna make the dough now. And I'm going to, anybody have any questions? Questions? Nope. Okay, I'll go back to speaker view. I'll look at me and I'll look at some of you. Um, I need another bowl. Hold on. Hold on a minute. Let's do this in this bowl. Okay. You so, I, what? You don't want a little bigger? No, this will be fine. I'm not making that much. So, I need to put in, I need to put two cups of flour, just regular flour. Here we go. And Okay, and um, I need uh, Barbara, and, Barbara, are we gonna be using the mix master or whatever? No. We, no, we're going right into the bowl. Okay. You're gonna use a bowl. It's just so easy, it doesn't require any mix master. Okay, cool. It's very easy to put two cups in here, put a, put a little bit of salt, pinch, and in a, in a cup here, I'm going to crack an egg. Let me get my egg. And I'm gonna mix it with a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil. You could use olive oil, it doesn't matter, but I just use vegetable oil for this. One, two. You see, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't measure exactly for this. One egg or two eggs, Barbara? One egg okay. for this recipe. One egg. Well, two turtles. So, well, there's one egg for the dough and one egg in the filling. Yeah. So here I am. Barbara, close your fridge. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You know, I do it all the time when I cook. I go back and forth. I leave the door open. It's not good. So I'm going to pour this in here and I'm going to mix it a little bit and then I'm going to add some water, enough water to hold it together to form a soft dough. So hold on a minute. Yona's gonna film this. I gotcha. You got it, Yona? Yeah, we're good. So I'm adding this and it's not enough. I, so far, I, I started out with about three quarters of a cup of water, but I'm adding it gradually, okay? And now I'm almost there. I still have a little more water in that bowl, in that, in that measuring cup. And I'm going to add just a drop more. And I'm going to show you what I have. Did the water be very cold or it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. So now I just need a little flour out here on the counter. Just put those right eggs back. behind you. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, you know, I'm just going to show you. I'm going to flour my hands a little bit. And I'm just going to bring the dough together to form a bowl. A ball, excuse me, in a bowl. 
And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little flour on the counter and I'm going to knead it just for a little bit, just, just so it stays together, okay? You can add a little more flour if your hands are sticking to it. And I think it is done. Every, my hands are staying dry. It's malleable. It's fine. See, there's my dough. Everybody see? Good. Okay. So what else did I learn about Krepla? Oh, I wanted to tell you this story. So when my grandmother, Rose, got too old to make Krepla, my grandfather found a lady. Her name was Mrs. Ackerman. And my grandfather lived in Newark and then he lived in Irvington, New Jersey at the time. And he found Mrs. Ackerman who was making Kreplach in her home. And he would buy dozens of Kreplach every year before the holidays. And he would buy them for the whole family. He sent them to us for a number of years. We lived in Omaha, Nebraska for four years. Then we lived in St. Louis, Missouri for several years, my husband and I. And we would get a box with six dozen frozen Kreplach. Dry ice. On, I, I dry ice, I guess. There was no, I don't think there was any FedEx. I don't think there, I don't know how they got sent to us. I can't even imagine. Um, but, you know, he was committed that his, his, you know, mama couldn't make them anymore, but his grandchildren were going to have them. Um, anyway, all right, here's my dough. And now, now's a good time if you're going to boil them to set up a pot of water to boil. Okay, and I'm gonna do that as well, right now. I don't need to film this. No, you don't I need to film this. I'm going to. Um, Barbara, just a quick question. Do you need to um, boil them and cook them before you could freeze them or can you yeah. freeze well, them? Well, yes, you need to boil them first. You're essentially parboiling them. You're gonna boil them for about 10 or 12 minutes. The dough, if you ate them then, and I have been many times known to dig right in because you can't resist. It's a little, a little chewy. It's it because it, it hasn't really boiled long enough. But um, when you put them back into your simmering soup, they um, they cook for another little while and then they're perfect. Um, and if you reheat the crepe lachin soup several days later because you have leftovers. Then they get a little overcooked. The dough expands a little. They're still delicious. Nobody's ever rejected them, but then they're, they, there's such a thing as they cook too long. Um, okay. All right, here's my pot. It's going on the stove. I'm gonna throw some salt in the water. I'm gonna wash my hands again. Okay. Oh, you just washed your hands before the sink. Oh, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> anyway. Okay, and the one thing I need is a, bun be a bench scraper. Put this over there. And um, something to cut out the dough with. And I have prepared uh, a tray. I put parchment paper on it because I love parchment paper. It keeps everything cleaner and makes lots of a mess and stuff doesn't stick. And I am going, I make my crepla with this jelly glass. Everybody has these in their house from what's it called? Bon Maman Preserves. I find it to be the perfect size. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but anything, you know, and some people actually, you can make your crepla and just cut up a bunch of squares. You can do that. Um, all right, so I'm spreading the, the um flour on the counter and i have my rolling pin here we go and i'm gonna roll and when i roll joe i roll a little bit i pick it up i spread a little more flour because you try to minimize sticking to the counter right so i'm gonna do that again I put Flour. No, I think I'm good. I'm going to have enough flour. I'm going to flour the rolling pin and I'm going to roll this out. I, I, somebody asked me how much, how thick. 
folks are underneath in the bin. It's between a quarter and an eighth of an inch, okay? Um, I don't I don't even know how you, you can see it, but it's hard to say how thick it is, and I think this is right. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out a bunch of circles. And I want you to know that we're gonna save all the scraps and re-roll them. We don't waste any dough because it's fine. You would never be able to tell when you boil them up, which ones were from the reused dough, even though theoretically it's gonna to be tougher, but it makes no difference really. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these out. And everyone can see now. Can you see? Yes, good. Cut these out. If you have a cutter or a glass or a cookie cutter that's a little bigger than this, this is fine too. You'll just have bigger kreplach. Your dough won't go as far. Um, right, your dough won't go as far, but they'll have more filling in them. Okay, here's the leftover dough. I'm not gonna roll that out right now. And now, the next thing I need to do is take some water and I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna wet the edges of each of these little circles. And the reason we do that is because when we go to pinch it together, it'll stick better and less likely to leak for things to, for it to open up when it's in the water, okay? Barbara, Barbara where are you putting the water? On the edges of the dough. On the edges only, of the dough. Only right? on the edges. Okay, only on, on the, the edges. edges. I mean, if some gets in the middle, it doesn't matter. Okay. But you you want to make the, the you want to have water on the edges so that, so that it sticks. So I'm going to do one or two slowly and show you what I do. So I'm going to take a little bit of filling, very little. Can you see? Is that too close, too far? They can see, Mom. I they got can it. see? Okay. It's it maybe a half a teaspoon. I don't know. I never measured. But they're gonna and I'm good on this. What? There he is, Mr. America. Okay. And now I'm going to stretch the bottom half over the top half. I'm and doing everything on the phone. You see? Now, Yona, can you see what Yona's showing you? Yes, yes, we can. Now, I'm gonna show you this. I, I will do, I typically would do them all at once and I will. But after I've done them, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna do a little crimping on the edge. So it looks like that, see? Okay, so now I'm gonna do the rest of them real fast so I can show you what I'm doing here. I, I, I usually do like an assembly line, which I'm gonna do now. I set out all the filling and I set out, and then, and then I gradually, you know, I do it, I don't do one at a time. I do each step of it. And then I, I see a piece of something that doesn't belong in there. Barbara, when you yes. get to the crimping, can you get a little closer so we can see what yeah, you're doing? Absolutely, yes. When you get to, thank you. Not a problem, okay. I got it. And let me just get the filling on this and then I'm gonna show you several times how I do it. Um, okay, we'll get closer, not a yes, yes, yes. And then everything is gonna cook inside the crepla when it goes into the simmering water and it's going to be delicious. Okay, now, before I crimp, I'm gonna dry my hands and I'm gonna put a little flour on them and this is what I'm going to do. Now, Yona, I want to get up close on that. Maybe you can zoom with your fingers. I can't. You can't? Okay. No, there's no zoom. Oh, there's no zoom. There's no... It's, there's not, no, it's, it's not that type of program. It's, it's zoom. Okay. So here we are here. So I'm going can to... You see, what you can you see better now? Yes. I, I took yes, Barbara thanks. off and I made it just you as the, as the main focus. Okay. Perfect. So... I'm going to crimp with my thumb and my fingers three or four times. Do it a couple of times. If it looks like it's not sticking, you just do it again. And then I have this. See, I'll do another one. Oh, and I'm going to put these on this tray, which is oh, going to put the tray over here. Yeah. And yeah. 
Okay, here we go. Here's another one. There's too much filling on this. I see it already, so I'm taking some off. Okay. So if I put too much filling on it, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll them all over and then I'll crimp them. Yeah, I know. I, I got a little too generous with the filling here. So the filling is yummy, but if you have too much, it's gonna come out. Okay. Like that was did a little. Yeah, well, it'll it'll be okay. Let me dry my hands on my towel. I always keep a towel here, and we will finish. It seems like a lot of work. I'll tell you what I have done many, many times. I have made my filling whenever I have a little time and then I freeze it without the egg, okay? You chop up the meat, whatever, season it up, put it in a Tupperware container and you freeze it. And then when you thaw it on the day you're gonna make the kreplach with the dough, then you just Take it out, thaw it, and put it in a bowl and add the egg, okay? Um, and here we go. Almost done with this batch. And I hear my water starting to do something behind me. Okay, okay now, time to crimp. now I'm gonna crimp. Okay, here we go. Crimp, crimp. This one I put too much filling in, so it's not crimping too well, but you know what? It's gonna be fine. This is not gonna to come, to, it doesn't look as the same, but it's gonna be fine. It's not gonna come apart. If you put too much filling in, the crimping is harder. This one is doing better because I was not as generous, see? Um, here we go. Put them, on there. put them on the tray. I don't know if you could freeze them like this. You might be able to. I just have never done it. Um, I think you need to cook the dough. That would be my suggestion. I would not suggest freezing them first. First of all, I don't think you wanna cook them the first time in your soup. And on the day that you're gonna serve them, you don't necessarily wanna have an extra pot going. You know, um, honestly, I do the same thing with Knedlach for Pesach and other holidays. I make them in advance and then I freeze them and then I put them in the simmering soup. And, and those are so good. I have to tell everybody. They're just fine that way. My mother used to think she had to make the Kanegluch at the exact moment. In fact, my mother and my mother-in-law used to have marked in their family Haggadah the page when it was time to get up and boil the water so that the Kanegluch would be done just at the right time. But I decided many years ago that that was way too stressful. And I started making them in advance a week or so before and freezing them as soon as I could get Pesach stuff out of my cabinet, you know, and be ready for it. And, and they're just fine. I almost think they're better. They puff back up in the, in the simmering soup and they're delicious. Okay. Me to put these in well, let me see. I don't know if it's boiling yet. Not quite. Um, okay. So that's, I'm going to now take this lump of um, dough which is, and put it back together and roll it out. And I am going to do it again. I'm gonna do it again, yep. And make some more. A little bit less filling in this batch. Yeah, I'll try to be more careful, Yona, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. I have a, show her the dog, show everybody. The, Lily is watching. You know why she's watching? She smells meat. <laughs> she smells meat. And when she smells meat, she comes <laughs> to see what's going on. She's waiting for you to drop something. <laughs> no, you know. No, she's not. She's really, she's very picky eater, this dog. And she doesn't um, eat, my floor is not as clean as it was supposed to be when we thought we'd have a dog, that the floor would be clean. <laughs> She's not that cooperative, but she does like meat. Okay, make another batch with these. Oh, it's Yona, a, you can go put them in gently. Here, Dad, you want to take all of them in so I can put these in? Okay. All we see is Charlie's iPhone for some reason on here now. Okay, I'm going with the water. 
on the dough. And Mom, don't have to do this in batches. I can put them no, all put those all in. They'll be fine. Just fine. And you know, I once taught a cooking class for the Solomon Ejector School of Suffolk County years ago, and I had a bunch of people in my kitchen. Then, first of all, who knew from Zoom then? And we didn't. And we were there together. Was no there was no Zoom exactly. And afterwards, we'd all sit down and eat what we cooked with a little glass of wine. Are we eating these tonight? No, we could. We haven't had dinner yet. We could eat these tonight. <laughs> Alan wants some, right? Are you going to fry them when you eat them later? Maybe. Maybe that's what we're going to eat for our dinner. I, I never do that with, with the onions. Wow. Barbara, I'm having them tonight. Okay. All of them. I'm afraid if I, I don't think so. If I eat fried crepla and then try to go to sleep, I don't think it'll do, I don't think it'll be good. No, we're boiling them and he'll be just um, fine. Well, you have to boil them even if you're going to fry them. You have to boil them first. And then you can saute up a lot of caramelized onions and then just brown them in a little bit of oil. When you Barbara, do how, when I put them in the um, boiling water, how long? 10 Three. minutes or so, 10, 12 minutes. First, they have to pop up to the top. And then they, they need about 10 minutes. Well, if you're going to eat them tonight, you might want to boil them a few more minutes. Okay. Nothing will happen to them. OK? Mm -hmm. So far, they look great. How, they're going to be delicious. I, I overstuffed all of them, but that's just who I, I am. I, I, it's hard not to, I, you know. Um, but they're sticking because I put the water on the edges. It sticks very nicely, even though they're very. Oh, really? All right, it happens. I see one that just. It happens. Oh. Okay, <laughs> now I'm gonna crimp these, and these will be the next. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can, you can. Barbara, can it be a crowded pot or or you should wait? What? Can it be can you have a lot of crepe lock in one boiling pot? Yeah, yeah. It, it's not it doesn't matter. Too much. Give me that for a second. I'll show them. It doesn't matter. Wait, show them what's in our pot. We could have put a few more. This is basically what we got growing. Is that how yours look? Yeah, to the top. Mm. I put too much filling in some of them also. <laughs> some of them have opened up. Oh, well. Yeah, a few of them. I, I overfilled some of them. Barbara? Yes? Do you start timing when you put them in the pot or after they pop up to the top? When you put them in the pot. Thank you. And, and it's not, um, I, I, I'll say it again, it's not an exact science. There's no timer set. Um, it's, not, it's not an exact science. Okay. I have one more. I have a little more dough. Al Alan and Ellen, how are yours doing? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. I just used, I just started playing with the extra dough. So far, so good. Good, 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 good. I don't think I have the same size cookie cutter. I'm using a mug upside down. Oh, that's good. It might be better. Hmm. Uh, might be bigger than mine. I was thinking of looking for something a little bit bigger for next time. But I've been doing this for years and they've been okay. So Ellen, <clears throat> Ellen did, yes. Did you make them um the dough gluten free? You know, no. <laughs> okay. All right. I I've did not, not been able to do that. I did make um vegetarian crepe luck for one of my granddaughters last fall because she is not eating meat and or chicken. And I, I stuffed it with caramelized onions and mashed potatoes. Well, that sounds good. That does sound good. So um, you could put anything in, you know? That that's like, reminds me of a pierogi stuffed exactly. in. Mm -hmm. what, what could be bad, right? Yeah. Um, and she ate it in veggie broth, but actually it would have been delicious with those fried onions, wouldn't it have been? Um, all right, I'm on my last few pieces of dough. How many of these have you made? I don't know what's in there. Yeah, what's in the tonight? Oh, how I made about four, five dozen prep luck, four, four or five dozen already that are in my freezer. Barbara, can you steam them instead of boiling them? 
I'm, I don't see why not. I haven't done that, but I don't see why not. Mm. You know, if you have a steamer that you like, uh, I can't imagine why that wouldn't be just fine. Alan's asking about an air fryer. We have a lot of air fryer lovers. I don't have an air fryer, so I have no, I have no experience with that. You'd still have to boil them or steam them first, Ellen. Yeah, yeah, I think you'd have to boil them first or steam them or whatever. I'm not it's not good in the air fryer. It's not good in the air fryer. I don't know. Barbara, Barbara, I think I now know what your children need to get you for your next birthday. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't want any new equipment in my kitchen. <laughs> oh my God, Barbara, it's a lifesaver. It's so amazing. Really? What do you <laughs> yes. mean? I would think that you'd have to boil them or steam them first and then air fry them to finish cooking them if you wanted to use the air fryer. Right. Probably. Oh, we make salmon and vegetables all the time in it. Really? Yes. I don't get as excited as everybody else with the air fryer. <laughs> We and love our air fryer. We use the it. The other thing that a lot of people have that I don't have is something called the Instapot. Oh, I've heard of that. I don't know what that is. But oh, that's the thing. Alan wanted to buy it for me, Barbara, but then he read up about someone who like blew off their face, so he did. With an Instapot? Yeah, I'll tell you a story. It's basically a pressure cooker. Yes. Oh, pressure cooker. That? Okay. She bought, her husband bought her a pressure cooker and then had to take it to the hospital. Well, that sounds horrible. No. That was a terrible gift that year. It seems to me that our mothers might have had pressure cookers. Mm -hmm. that was, your mother had one, Charlie? Yeah? I think Instant Pot is, a, is safer than a, um, the other thing. Which? Yeah, yeah. Pressure cooker. Instant Pot's definitely much safer than a pressure cooker. The old-fashioned ones with the on the top. Yeah, I think the um, new ones are all the time. Instant but, Pot also is a hybrid my, with other. My mother used yeah. that too. Oh my God, I remember that. Yeah, right. but if you try and open it too soon, it can explode. But those are the old-fashioned ones, yeah, not the Instant Pot. With that little and thing on thing. top, right? See, these are yeah. yeah, with a little. Sh -sh -sh -sh. Do they still bake those? No, right? Yeah, people can with them, but they're fancy oh, things. Okay, yeah. Barbara, well. those look great. Hello. <laughs> Back from. Back when where I'm from, the uh, the craplex we make round and circle one. Yes, yes. Oh, Lana, you make them circular and, and we make them of... circle. Uh, so when we you pinch it all around, the two edges combine like put together the two, oh. two things put together. So you make them circle, and you can freeze them. You just put uh, flour on top. You put them in a bag and freeze them, and anytime you can take some of it and just um, boil it. Yeah. Barbara, Thank when they you, float, Anna. they're done. Barbara, when they float, they're done. When they float, you want them in another couple of minutes. Okay. I'm going to show you mine again, what they look like when they're done. Oh, they look great. They look good. I don't know. There. See? Yeah, wonderful. The dough looks like it's mostly cooked. The inside is going to be hot. Um, yeah, these need another few minutes. I, I just put in the last batch. Yeah, they look good. Barbara, question. I, I'm going to have some extra meat mixture. What can I do with it? Um, oh, I'll give you an idea. You can, first of all, you can, you can, you can freeze it. First of all, in a little Tupperware. Right? Even, though it has egg, even though it has the egg in it? Yeah, probably. I don't think anything would happen to it. Okay. You can also make some other kind of dough or take, you can take some of that Pepperidge Farm puff pastry. Got it. You could make a couple of little meat pies oh. and bake them in the oven. I got you it. can do spaghetti and meat that you have left over with onions and fry them. A spaghetti, yeah. like make them thin and little tiny ones. Good and you fry them. Uh, it calls Pavlotsky yeah. <laughs> in Russian. What so is it called? Just, Pavlotsky. Pavlotsky? Pa Pavlotsky means like uh, in the float, like um, um, on a like when you're in on a ship. Mm -hmm. They do quick, like when they have leftovers, macaronis or spaghettis or anything with this kind of meat. You mix them all up and fry it on a pan 
with fried onions. Wow. So you use the, the spaghetti, get the leftover spaghetti goes on the pan also? Yes, all together. That sounds delicious. Yep. Right. Sounds delicious. What my, my father would have called the manchel for the baichel. Right. Um, that means like uh, on uh, for the um, what do you call the the not the soldiers but um, you know on a, on a ship. Right, the sailors. Sailors, that's it. <laughs> sailors, you know they that they use it a lot. Wow. Why not? So anything that you would do with any kind of chopped up meat, you could do with this. Um, yes. You could just saute it up um, with a little onions or whatever and brown it and put it in a pita with a little tahina sauce, anything, anything that you would do. Um, you could use the leftover meat for. Um, and uh, I don't know, that's all I have. Barbara, where do you buy the dough? Where do you find a... Uh, the dough. We made it. We the made the dough, Bill. I, we or made the dough. I made or the you dough. can go to a Russian store and buy the whole thing ready in a bag. <laughs> no, I want to make it. I don't want to <laughs> buy it. The kreplach dough, maybe you weren't what well, we made it here with flour no, whole, and water. The whole kreplach is made. Wait, 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 excuse me. You can buy it. All right. Uh, um, you said, Barbara, what did you say? You can make with uh, flour and what else? The dough. Uh, um, Dina's going to send you the recipe. The, the flour, the recipe is flour, an egg, a little vegetable oil, water, salt. That's it. All right. And All right. um, some you. people do use wonton wrappers for kreplach, but they don't taste like the kreplach that, that I grew up eating. The dough right. has to be a little, has to be more substantial. It has to have some chew to it, which okay. you don't get with a wonton wrapper. Um, Got it. But you can make them with wonton wrappers. I certainly know people who have done that. Um, it's not the huh? same, but you certainly can do it. OK. I, I assume then, Michelle, you could do it with the rice, the rice ones, the rice wrappers for spring, uh, the spring rolls mm -hmm. that use it. That way you can make it gluten free. Absolutely, you could. There would be no reason why you couldn't. You could probably find a some kind of dough recipe with yeah. I was just gonna say other flours. Um, Deb, you're on it, right? You know, um, <laughs> I'm not. You could probably find a recipe online on for gluten free ravioli, and then you could adapt that dough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try cassava flour because that is a pretty good one to one substitute. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that should okay. work. Okay, thank you, Barbara. I'm going to sign out. I really my appreciate pleasure. it. My pleasure. Okay, bye bye. It's my bye. Pleasure. Well, anyway, if you haven't been here before, welcome to the world of kreplach. Everybody will love your kreplach. You can't mess them up unless you overfill them, like I did some of mine, and then they open up. But other than that, you, you can't go wrong. They will be delicious. And you can fill them with anything you want uh, meat, chicken, Vegetables only, and they'll be delicious. Floating well, thank you. Well, thank Barbara, you so much. My pleasure. Barbara, Barbara, about how many do they make? How many crepla do you get out of? Let's see, that dough recipe. Approximately. I'm going to tell you in a minute. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I got about 24 creplocks with the, with the recipe for the called for two cups of flour. About, oh, okay. about thank you. Okay. Um, thank you. And it mm -hmm. depends. Some, sometimes I probably roll it a little thinner and maybe I get a couple more, but. Barbara, I, I was very busy keeping up with you. So now, so I made them, I boiled them for about 10 minutes. What's the story about when I put it in the soup? What, what was that bond, the end of the story with the soup? Okay. So you're going to freeze them. Okay. Once they're cool. You can either freeze them on the tray and then put them frozen into a Ziploc bag, mm -hmm. or you can just <coughs> put them cool in a Ziploc bag. They may stick together, but when you take them out and drop the bunch, if you want them individualized so that you can take out a couple at a time, I suggest freezing them in, on a tray first. Then you bring your soup to a simmer and you put the kreplach in and you let them cook for another 
whatever, 15, 20 minutes. Excellent. And they'll thaw and they'll puff back up and they'll be delicious. I'm excited. So what am I, how do I actually taste them tonight? What do we, what do we do about tonight? Go ahead, dig right in. Okay. I will do that. You can eat the ones that have been boiling for 10 or, for 10 or 12 minutes. The, the dough might be a little chewier than if it boiled for longer in the soup, but it'll be delicious. I'm telling you, I've done it many times. And Ellen, what, what was your filling? Chicken? chicken? Yeah, chicken with onion. We don't, you, you know, we, you know, mm -hmm. we no red yeah. meat. No, really. Yeah. And I was very surprised that Barbara said no chopped meat. That really surprised me. I thought chopped meat was usually it, like chopped chicken or chopped chopped beef, you whatever. Could. I was. You could, but that's not traditionally how it's made. You could certainly do that. Okay. And and, and, it, and it probably would be delicious, especially Ellen. Ellen especially Ellen, chicken. If you use chopped meat or chopped chicken or whatever, it's not cooked like this. The the beef that was used here right. so it would have to boil sufficiently to make sure it got cooked right right because it would be more like it was sauteed or something like that right you, or you, could, also, cook it, you could also brown it before i would assume right, you could but again it will not have the same consistency it will be different you can so barbara it. yes you used steak pieces that you had cooked previously i did and that was okay that's yeah. It was, like that. The ends. it was some end pieces and what yeah. it didn't get eaten. And I um, saved them. And I have done that before. I'll tell you what, when I made kreplach a couple of weeks ago for the Chagim, for my family, most of the meat that was in them, in fact, all was some beef ribs. I bought some mm. beef ribs at Aaron's and I cooked them and they were tough. Mm. So I just chopped them up and froze them. And then I used it for the kreplach and it turned out just fine. The kreplach are delicious. Okay, so, so yeah, you can take those out, honey. Thank you. Um, so in my right. family, we never pre-cook them. We always freeze them when we make them. We oh. freeze them and we take it out when we're ready to eat and cook them and eat right away. We well, never... Good. Cook them ahead of time and then freeze them. Well, it's good to know that you can do that. I have never tried yes. that, but I'm always nice to hear that. Yes, yes. So you just freeze them and then the whole thing is yes. You just put a little flour so they don't stick together. Right. Uh, in a clear bag so you could see what it is inside, right. <laughs> and uh, you can just uh, name it. What's with what's with it? Like it's chicken or whatever, because right. uh, sometimes we make potatoes. Sometimes cheese with cottage cheese, which is sweet. Sometimes I make it with um, um, sour cherries. Right. It's more on a dessert side. So yeah. Wow. Oh, that's very isn't, isn't that more like pierogies? I was going to say it sounds a lot like a pierogi. Yeah, it's like a pierogi. It depends. With meat, you always make it in a circleish way, like they are like circle. Uh, when it's potatoes, it's more half, like a half a moon. And cherries, like also half a moon and everything else, except for the meat. The meat ones go together like a circle one. Also, you could probably like freeze but, them individually, un uncooked, and then put them in a bag. Right, right. So they don't stay. It have to be condensed yes. like a ravioli. Yes. Yeah, it's like a ravioli, exactly. Just pick it up. Is that called like a pelmeni? Pelmeni, that's it. That's the Russian thing, Pelmeni. <laughs> I was trying to translate how it is in English. It's, yeah, it's Pelmeni. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Barbara. Um, we pleasure. really appreciate it. And we will definitely have you back. Um, next week, we have Lana Kagan and her mom, and they're going to be teaching an apple cake, which is delicious. She brought me a piece um, <laughs> of the pieces. It was delicious. Um, so she'll get me the recipe tomorrow or tonight, that way I can send it out to you. So the email with tonight's video and recipe with the, late, with the ingredients list for Lana's recipe will go out either tomorrow or on Tuesday, um, depending on how busy I am tomorrow. <laughs> thank you, Tova. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Barbara, did you see who's on? Thank you. Thank you. Barbara, this is Lauren Thank Herman. you.